As soon as we buy into the cult of the machine, we're just like them. Rhetoric. Always more rhetoric. <laughs> way to die. It's just been over 20 years since Deus Ex was first released on the PC, and every time you mention it, someone reinstalls it. Over time, it's become regarded as one of the greatest games of all time, if not the greatest game of all time. Depending on what boulders I was punching on which day, it actually may be my favorite game ever made. It's a game that every time you play, you find something new. Yet, the first level, Liberty Island, has been fairly divisive. That's what I want to look at in today's video. I know a number of people who've given up on this level and never continue with the rest of the game, and that's a shame. What a shame. In this video, we'll do a recap of the level, we'll look into an article about the development of the level, and we'll also look at some responses people give in to why they didn't care for the level the first time around or turn them off initially. Note that for whatever reason, Shadowplay OBS, whenever I tried recording this, it appeared really dark, so I did have to boost the brightness in post-production, so if the quality looks a little weird, that's the reason. Before we could pick our stats to allocate into, I highly recommend mastering athletics. It's an important skill. All I know is you never had the makings of a varsity athlete. A son of a bitch! I'm kidding, of course. It's like the research skill in System Shock 2, which I recently did a video on. We start off on the outskirts on the docks. We could go enjoy some booze, go for a swim. We'll run into our brother Paul. I only recently realized that JC and Paul are both voiced by the same person. Think I'd miss my brother's first day? Didn't think you'd have a choice. What's going on? The NSF. They hit one of our shipments. It's like Nolan North talking to Nolan North. For Loan sharks, huh? No, don't look at me, pal. I ain't no bank. I got a better idea. You could play your cards right. You could actually avoid talking to Paul, and the game will acknowledge that decision. But if you don't talk to him, you don't get some additional things he could give you, such as the crossbow, a rifle, or, of course, the GEP gun. For no one, I might come up against them. The GEP gun might be useful. They have a security bottom patrol near the statue entrance. Great. What's the first move? Just a lot of interesting questions right off the bat. Why is he NATCO? Why, do, why are they situated on Liberty Island? I mean, it doesn't seem like the most convenient location. And her enemy, the NSF, why are they here on our home turf? That's like robbing a store that's right next to a cop station. That's a lot of balls right there. A lot of balls. They want to send you in to see how you perform. And depending on where you allocate your skill set, maybe they should have reconsidered. As this is an RPG, at the beginning of the game, you're going to be shooting guns like old people fuck. The way you shoot guns, even stormtroopers will be thinking you have a bad shot. Anyways, let's make our way around the outskirts here. Let's try and distract them with a soda. Let's listen in to what these guys have to say. Rhetoric. Always more rhetoric. You want rhetoric. I'll give it. It's more rhetoric. <laughs> At the back of the statue, we could climb up these boxes to take the back way in, but we'll come back to that later. Let's explore a little more. We could go down to this area. We could find the security codes for inside. We could find a few more items here. Let's head to the north side of the island where Paul told us about an insider who could give us a key. Can you have choices? You could stealth around these guys. You could kill them. You could even swim around them. So this is the first time I've actually checked out this ship down here. And inside we have a couple of weapon upgrades. As I mentioned earlier, this game always throws us some new surprises your way when you go around and explore. Nearly almost drowned while doing this, but I managed to avoid drowning. We've managed to avoid drowning. Good job. Maybe I should put more points into athletics. All I know is you never had the makings of a... Shut it, Junior. On this section here, we could go talk to the informant to get the key. And as a joke, I picked the second response of saying that I might put the leader in a body bag. And with that, hey, he actually doesn't give you the key. <laughs> Another thing I discovered. Well, let's see if we could do something about that. Take this. Let's go check out the west side of the island where we have UNATCO headquarters. We can't go inside just yet, but we could check out the outskirts here and pick up a few items. Again, I have to mention, NSF attacking us right on our home turf? A lot of balls. This game's an immersive sim 0451 game. Let's try 0451. Yeah! So let's look at the ways we could get inside here. We could take the front entrance here. Oh. 
Okay, that didn't really work. Let's climb up these pile of boxes. What they're doing here and so conveniently placed, eh, whatever, it's a video game. All right, let's sneak our way in. Let's get down to the lower level where we could free one of our agents. All right, aiming, aiming, and oh shoot. All right, well, time to deliver some rhetoric. Oh, oh geez. That's a DSP level of accuracy right there. I, I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. All right, well, let's run around a bit. And, oh, I guess they forgot about me. Okay, let's try again. Making our way down here and vents. I do have to note that further games in this series did get a little too heavy on relying on vents to navigate your way around. It's always nice with these old games to actually see a mirror where it actually worked. I'm looking at JC in the mirror. There's some items here. Is that soy? Soy food? Oh boy. Soy boy! Soy boy! And this game really got right with future trends. Let's get our buddy Gunther out of here. Let's cause a little havoc along the way. That's him. Ah! We could give him a weapon, but I've already taken care of everyone, so sorry, Gunther. You just go go make your way back to base. Well, let's make our way to the top, where our main objective is to talk to their leader and conspiracy time. This game will go way deeper down on that front. Our executive branch is handpicked. 19 of the last 23 U.S. That's a think tank. Anyone can become a member. But not everyone does. That's why they call it the secret government. All the top scientists and billionaires are coming out saying it's a false hologram. It is artificial. The computers are scanning it and finding tension points where it's artificially projected and gravity's bleeding in to this universe. That's what they call dark matter. So we're like a thought. Let's head back to UNATCO base and Paul will talk to you. You'll get different responses depending on what you did and how you did it, which is always a very nice little touch. And that wraps up Liberty Island. The next part's really interesting where we get to do a lot of dialogue and exposition in UNATCO, but that's for another video, maybe a full video one day. With Deus Ex recently having its 20th year anniversary, there's a bunch of 20 year anniversary articles, and one I found for PC Gamer was specifically about Liberty Island. Let's take a look at some interesting insights here. I will also link to the full article in the description if you're interested. They brought in War Inspector's wife. War Inspector is the director, and on the dock, she just kind of goofed around for a while and the team seemed frustrated but it turned out she loved it. So the team decided to double down those quiet moments and having fun with those object physics. Harvey Smith, one of the lead developers on the team, talks about how initially the game was going to start with a more quiet introduction, where you'd start in the office first. One of Harvey Smith's favorite games was Ultima Underworld, which throws you right into the thick of things. And opposed to Ultima Underworld 2, which he found greatly disappointing, throws you into a castle to make your way around and talk with people. So they went with the Ultima Underworld 1 approach of throwing you into the thick of things, and instead making the Unaco portion the reward for completing the first mission. What was interesting within the development team that there was a combination of the tech nerds and the pen and paper nerds, which did lead to some conflicts at certain points. Some of the team came from shooter backgrounds and wanted to go more along the lines of Half-Life or Quake or Goldeneye. Some came from Origin, who worked on the Ultima series, and want to go more of that pen and paper direction, but have it in first person. And others were in love with looking glass studio games like Ultima Underworld and System Shock, and want to go that direction, so there were a lot of interesting compromises that happened throughout the development. With that, there's always been a bit of a reputation for Liberty Island for being a bit of a filter level. I know a number of people who dropped the game after this, and I've seen it pop up over and over again on the internet. So, the Deus Ex subreddit, I did make a post. I got some insight from individuals who initially were put off by it, but eventually powered their way through and now love the game. It's fairly common for people to play this more as a shooter to begin with, and found it too complicated to begin with. Some people just outright skip the training level, and to know on the training level, it isn't overly great and explaining all the possibilities you have as far as combat goes or stealth goes or hacking goes. Some people found the stealth and melee approach a little too tedious. So it's interesting looking back at the article where it discusses the team came from a shooter background, but also a pen and paper, but also immersive sim background. And we can see there was a bit of conflict there and even on this first level where we had a number of people trying to play it like a shooter and found it greatly disappointing. Once they were able to get past it, and once they were able to make some progression, level up a little bit in the stats, they found how great it was. 
So yes, the game could have definitely done a better job with that train level, and it sounds like probably the marketing could have been better of what it was going for, but that was a long time ago, that's 20 years, so look how much the industry has changed since then. And look how much influence Deus Ex has left on the industry since then. Anyways, that was a trip down memory lane of Liberty Island, the divisive first level of Deus Ex. It's hard for myself to now think about how, it, how I played it the first time around. At some point I do plan doing a, a full breakdown of the game, but I want to just talk about Liberty Island on this point, because it's an interesting subject. Happy 20th anniversary, Deus Ex. Guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment how you felt about the level the first time around, or maybe if it turned you off or you've loved it. I got some boulders to smash. Anyways, boulder punch out.